Hello, and welcome to Peacock Plays Android Netrunner. I'm Henry Branscombe. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm Ben Con. <laughs> Here you've got the game against uh, Ben and Matt. Uh, Matt on the left, Ben on the right. Yeah, this is the second game of the first round of the Store Championship at Forever Night Games in Olympia, Washington. This took place on New Year's Day. Packs legal up to the source. Um. So, ew, this is game two against Matt. At game one, he ran his Replicating Perfection Grail deck against my Stealth Andromeda deck, ew, which I think is a pretty favorable matchup for me. You can see ew, that uh, you can see that video as well on our YouTube channel. Well, now uh, Matt is getting set up with a Magnum Opus Field Chaos Theory deck ick, to face my NEH Scorched Earth deck. So my deck is just uh, card for card from uh, Dave Hoyland's in the Red Rain NBN in deck from Worlds. Well, I I was a longtime Super Modernism player back when I felt that that deck was competitive, and this is the closest I've, I've come to playing a deck like Super Modernism since then. In the combination of, of early aggression in terms of fast scoring, combined with, with the ability to uh, punish aggressive running in with snares and scorched earth. Yeah, it's a pretty nasty combination. Here, got a basic NEH starting plan of. Pad campaign in in the remote, uh, wrap around over HQ and pop up window over R and D. Yep. Meanwhile, uh, Matt has to sure gamble and quality time. I know he joked. I was sitting next to them at the time. Uh, he joked that it was basically just a second mulligan, or yeah, second mulligan, not third yet. It's a different game. Plays out public sympathy, which lets him keep some of the well. stuff off of the quality time and actually. While the first Public Sympathy doesn't do it, if another one follows behind that does begin to turn off my Scorch plan, two Public Sympathies roughly e equals one Plast Greek Carapace. Only with Duggars out, he can also just refill them in the course of a turn. Yeah. So, back to Ben, playing another remote. Yeah, just moving through my deck and unfortunately not seeing some of the burst economy I would like right out of the gate. But, I mean, Drip is good. Drip will help you eventually. Yeah, and I mean, he's at two credits right now, uh, which means he's not in a good position to trash my uh, econ, so I just click up to seven. Makes sense. Let's you start running, or lets you prevent against his running, rather. I mean, if you've got a pop-up window, that provides economy anyways, but... Yeah, but being able to res the wraparound might be useful. Especially if it doesn't drop you below a uh, hedge fund. Yeah. He test runs out an opus, uh, but he had to draw into it, so he's only able to click it twice, which leaves him at four credits, which is... Yeah, the, Unfortunate. the inefficiency here, here is painful, especially since he'll have to click for a credit before he can replay that opus now. Meanwhile, my icon is starting to hum along clicklessly. We see a, a pad campaign rezzed. So sorry, I think the first server might have been a marked account. Uh, yeah, I think so, having looked over the footage previously. Spoilers, I know what's going to happen. I can see the future. Past. Whatever. I just played in this game, and since I'm not having horrible memory loss, I think. Who are you? Anyway, right. finally drawing into a sweeps wake, which is nice against public sympathy, although I don't think he actually had any more than standard had in size. Yeah, he was at five cards there. I could have held it and tried to punish the public sympathy, but at this point I'd rather just have my money now. Oh, it turns on the threat of Sansan, -San, which I believe I have installed. Oh, Always and nice to have that available, and then icing up archives. Yeah, when you see the Duggars, you have to wonder if he's trying to overdraw, and when I think overdraw, I think retrieval run. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I definitely thought at first, he called the Duggars out, I think, before the public sympathies against me, and I definitely, for a moment, was wondering if he was playing some kind of, uh, oh, what's it called? The uh, String Theory. That's the one. So he brings his opus... Alright, so we uh, see him... Yeah. Clicks up. Yeah, he also played a diesel that turn. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No worries. And it is back to me now. We see me installing another remote. Pardon me. It behind, it's behind the overlay, but we'll move that out of the way. I believe that remote might be the Sansem. And mm -hmm. we see a hedge fund now. 
So now you're up to 15 credits, he's at 2, he's got an opus out, but you have yet to have to res any ice, which is... I mean, it's a nice place to be in. Yeah, I'm threatening to score, and because the first public sympathy doesn't actually do anything against me... Alright, you see me considering taking a credit, but instead uh, charging marked accounts. But yeah, because the first public sympathy doesn't actually do anything against, against my flatline plan, and having the credit advantage here also means I can just straight up threaten murder, although he hasn't gotten enough accesses to know that I'm running a flatline plan. And I'd say marked accounts is probably the right play there. I mean, he is not going to be able to trash it, and even if it does, it'll hurt him way more than not having one credit will hurt you. Yeah, so why take one credit when I can take three? Yep. No, spamming assets just seems good here because it's it stops him from develop and from generating a really large. There's the sand sand. economic uh, advantage. Uh, he trashes yeah. it. He was clever enough to click up to hammer it. But yeah, he clicked up to a six before we were hitting it, but unfortunately, I mean that still just puts him in so far behind. Yeah. No, he's. I mean, it's not like NEH has ever recovered from having one of their sand sands trashed before. Yeah, so you see now the two credits just come in. Keep the economy ticking away. And again, it's just one of those things where if I have my combo pieces, he's dead. And boom, just breaking news out of hand. Yeah, it's really nice to get that breaking news scored because, I mean, all it cost me was the turn itself. If I, I had those credits coming in anyway. And now, and, and because it was virtually uncontested, it sort of creates the Shiku effect where I have to score about the same number. I have to score fewer real agendas than he does. Yeah, and in the meantime, he just opused up to sure gamble, which I mean isn't bad. But if all your turn did is give him some money when he still has no breakers on the table, like yeah, so we're gonna get that overlay ideal. out of your way so you can see that remote I'm building. Yeah, real remote with real ice and everything. Oh dear, and something and a real in. agenda inside. Yeah, he might think it's a San San. He might not. But without any breakers in play, I don't think he has much choice other than to duggers and try and find them. Yeah, so he does duggers, uh, starts to look for his pieces. Unfortunately, that means conceding this agenda, but he didn't have a real way to contest it, aside from, like, cross his fingers that I'm bluffing behind double pop-up. Which, I mean... And if he hits a roto turret there, which he can very well expect at this point, because he hasn't seen my influence, then that's two turns of work for that opus down the drain. Yeah. It's just, without at least a sentry breaker, running right now is... And I mean, heck, yeah, I don't think he's actually seen enough of your influence to even know you're not doing the uh, NEH Grail. Although, I don't know. That He might expect it, given that he was playing RP Grail, but it still means that he's probably hesitant to rig up. Yeah, I mean, if I were him, I would just be expecting it, typical uh, NEH age Fastro with uh, Architect. Well, so would I, but I mean... But even still, you don't want to face check an Architect either. Like, that's the beauty of Architect, actually, is that, like, even if, if you want to say, okay, I don't have my Mimic, so I won't play my other programs, scoring a Beal, by the way, out of that server. But yeah, even if you want to do the trick uh, that you would against Roto, where you just don't play your other breakers, there is Architect still punishes you for face checking. Hard. Especially out of any age. More card draw! Because that wasn't already happening. Yeah. Alright, so we see him get out, out a Gordian in Blade on a Dinosaurus. I think he mentioned something about that being teching against a uh, toll booth. Yeah, I mean, toll booth then... is a real threat for me. We then see the E3, which it does function against Eli. So this isn't this isn't the best matchup against it's my ice sweep, but it does do something. Yeah. Oh no! Look, uh, NEH running out of playmat. Huge surprise. Um. But yeah, from what I remember of his Ice Suite, it was... Uh, I think also it had uh, E3 has some uh, attempted synergy with the Battering Ram he's running. Um, Which is fair, although I feel like the use cases for that are pretty limited. I mean, it helps against those big Wayland in barriers with multi-subroutines, and it helps against... Uh, what's it called? That next... The next barrier? Next Silver. But, I mean... And I guess it helps against... Hive, but even then, it's pretty limited. Yeah, I could see it maybe in a really blue sun heavy meta game, but ours isn't. Um, Last so. tournament we saw, uh, like a third of the field was blue sun, but oh yeah, I suppose so. I don't know. It's not new and shiny now, so yeah. 
Um, and I guess with Battering Ram, you've already got multi-breaking. And I will say, Battering Ram Thesaurus did cause me some trouble when he was running it. He gets out his uh, Ninja and another Public Sympathy. But it's... I mean, it takes him down to nothing to do that, and you're sitting at 16 credits with no ice res yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting three free credits per turn now, and while he's, he's got most of his rig, he can't really afford to use it. So you see me res and use Jackson in check and see whether my remote is still secure. I believe there's a um, wraparound on there as well. So he actually still can't get in, so I'm installing there. Even if he, he did have of his breaker, he doesn't have the money to actually get into that server. I mean, he can get up to six, but let's say I let's say I've put him on Corroder, or he opuses twice is to get up to uh to get up to four, or plays out his Corroder goes back to two, and then if I can cost him him even just that two credits with whatever ice isn't uh wrap around. isn't wrap around, then I'm good. He just doesn't have the time right now, and. His position's only going to get better if I wait. Yeah, his deck requires a long, long setup, and that is not something you actually have against NEH most of the time. Yeah. So you see me discarding a, another card. There are Jackson Howard on the table, so I don't really care about that, but he also doesn't have a lot of means to pressure it. If he tries to pressure Jackson directly, that means he has to uh, double Opus to get the money. Alright, so we see him just uh, take six and play a battering ram. So again, he's conceded this remote Which, it to me. At this point means he's going to be five points down, I'm pretty sure. Which is, you know, that's not ideal. Yeah, and he still doesn't have any multi-access on the table. And yeah, we see the Astro um, scored. I think he actually confessed to me later, um, he didn't actually have multi-access in his deck. Um, really, with R&D interface in faction. Yeah, a new player, I guess, didn't see the value of it in comparison to the hand size and stuff, but... Well, it's, I mean... It just creates a situation here where it's very difficult for him to win. I mean, my ice is basically all turned off by this point, but unless he's able to uh, R&D lock me, I just score the next thing out there. And with Battering Ram, Wraparound costs him as much as it costs you. Now, the fact of the matter is, I have a Beal in hand, so uh, running HQ might be the right play. If he hits it, he keeps the game alive. If he misses, I win. Mid-seasons, he misses. Yeah, so there's his first indication of the Scorch plan. But it doesn't matter because seven points. Yeah, we have the Beal here for the win. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here for uh, round two shortly.